Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on a top 16 deck list from ARG Springfield that literally just finished day one as of the time of me filming this video. Now, the duelists are going to go back and play more for day two, you know, top 16 cut, but basically we have a good pool of information to pull from. Basically, this is the first actual quote-unquote major event, or at least like higher tier event than a regional circuit would be for the Zodiac format in the TCG. And if you were looking to be part of Team Nozu, I mean, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of hope for you, but at least not a lot of it. Out of the top 16 deck lists, only two of those deck lists did not contain Zodiac cards. The, most of them being Zodiac Kaiju variants, Zodiac Metal Foes, as well as Infernoid Zoo lawn mowing based decks. But there were two decks that did get top 16 that had no Zoo cards in them, and those are two decks that I definitely will be doing a little video profiling them just to sort of help spread information around into what you can sort of expect to uh, to structure your deck as if you uh, if you are not going to be playing Zodiac Beast cards. But this is the 16th place after Swiss deck list, Blue Eyes Kaiju that was piloted by Sean Rye. Hope that he actually goes a little bit further than top 16, but we'll have to wait until tomorrow at the time of me filming this video to see that, and I definitely will be looking for this deck on the uh, live stream tomorrow. But anyway, there's Triple Blue Eyes White Dragon, there's Triple Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon, there's two Dragon Spirit of Whites, there's three Sage with Eyes of Blue, there's three the White Stone of Ancients, there's one the White Stone of Legend, and then there are two Gamma Seal Kaijus, one Gandarla, Gandarla? Yeah, I can't read because my eyes are really, uh, really blurry, and then one Doggeran as well as two maxis to be the hand traps in the main deck. And then for spells, Soul Charge, three Interrupted Kaiju Slumbers, three Pot of Desires for draw power, three trade ins for the same reason, two Twin Twisters for back row removal, three drag, uh, Return of the Dragon Lords, had to think about the card name for a second, two Silver's Cry, and then three Melody of Awakening Dragon alongside a Dragon Shrine just to be, you know, some good starter cards. Now, something to note is that there's no cards of consonants in this list, and uh, essentially, I don't know if it actually came up to have like a need for cards of constants at all with the with the tuners that you do have access to here and there's also you know obviously no galaxy engine which is something that we've seen a lot of in more recent blue eyes decks uh, recently but those have basically just been swapped out for the kaiju engine in the form of the four kaijus as well as the three board wipes that the kaiju slumbers provide to allow you to potentially just go second against the zodiac uh, matchup I um, I honestly expect that he went second blind in all of his die rolls. Um, at least that's the way the deck looks like it's built and structured, but anyway. The extra deck has one Alsei, one number 38, one number 46 Dragon Long, one Galaxy Eyes Cypher Dragon, one full armor Photon Dragon, and one 95 Galaxy Eyes Dark Matter Dragon as the Xyz base. And then for uh, Synchros, we have two Spirit Dragons, two Azure Eyes, one Vermilion Dragon Mech, one Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, one Star of Spark Dragon, one Michael the Arc Like Sworn, and then one Black Rose Moonlight Dragon, which is a very good disruptor against Zodiac Beasts. If you're able to put Spirit Dragon on board and then tag it out into Moonlight to bounce their Xyz, you basically end their turn if you hit them in a, in a good spot. It's one of the best, like, disruption cards you can actually have against it. But for the side deck, Triple Lancia for the Infernoid matchup, obviously 2 DD Crow just to be sort of blanketly good hand trap like against a very large amount of the uh, of the field because this is very good against like Zodiac I imagine it could have some applications against Infernoid Zoo uh, but then obviously it could also be used against DDD and potentially the mirror match as well this honestly is a very well suited hand trap right now in the format but one Rageki and two Dark Hole for additional board wipes the third Twin Twister and then there's some traps in the side deck in the form of Emptiness triple anti-spell and two-dimensional barrier. So, like I said, this was one of the only two deck lists in top 16 of ARG Springfield that actually did not play any zoo cards. So there was two out of the top 16 deck lists that had no zoo cards in them, the other of which being a lone DDD deck. So there is some hope, like I said, for if you don't want to shell out money for zoo cards, but ultimately you have to build your deck knowledgeably. You have to play your matchups knowledgeably. You have to know exactly what you're expecting to get yourself into and know how to play around it. And this person seems to have built his deck in a manner in which he was very knowledgeable of what he needed it to do. He was trying to go second, it looks like, and out Drancia and then just kill his opponents with uh, with the basically the very strong powerhouse that Blue Eyes has access to, especially since 
Return of the Dragon Lords Engrave is a hard counter for Drancia on following turns as well. So, I mean, there is that to, you know, keep in mind if you are thinking about playing this deck against Zoo in the upcoming format. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this deck in the comments down below. What do you think about ARG circuit series in general? Whether or not you think that they're relevant for gathering information from or any sort of that stuff. I'm curious. I'm always curious to see what you guys' opinions are on this sort of stuff. And I'm putting this out there because I'd like to spread information. Like, information, you can definitely have never, you can never have too much information, especially with YCSs coming up very soon in the form of YCS Seattle literally next weekend and then YCS Atlanta two weeks after that. So if you're planning on going to any regional or any YCS or any event in the next couple of weeks, information is definitely something you want to have on your side. So that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to do these videos. But other than that, like I've already said, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys' opinions are and thoughts are in the comments down below. If you want to support me, you can definitely like the video and subscribe if you already haven't. And if you know some people that might also like my channel, definitely consider sharing the videos around to them and maybe encouraging them to subscribe as well. It helps the channel grow a lot and you'd have my gratitude. But other than that, if you want to support me directly, you can definitely check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description to that as well as on the video if you want to support me directly and maybe get in on some monthly giveaways, you could definitely go check that out if that is something to your liking. But other than that, thank you for watching, thanks for your time as usual, and as always guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.